Hey, YouTube. So the idea of, uh, I don't know if you want to call it socialized education or free college or what have you, has been something that's been uh, batted around in the last election and seems to be a topic that is coming up in the future election. And a lot of people, primarily those on the right side of the, uh, the aisle, are freaking out about it. And as I said, calling this a socialist idea. So I want to share with you some of my thoughts uh, on why that may not necessarily be a bad thing. First off, what is education and why are we having it? So let's talk about that. You know, initially, way back when, the uh, the peasants didn't really need an education. They just went out basically and plowed their fields and, uh, you know, planted their crops and gave a part of it to the, uh, to the guy who lived up on the hill. That guy who lived up on the hill, he had an education. And uh, that guy who lived up on the hill would go into town periodically and give some of his uh, good fortune to the church. And the people of the church, they had an education. But that was pretty much it up until about the middle of the 19th century. Now, for you uneducated types, that's about 1850. Anyway, up until around, or around 1850, uh, kids only went to school until about the sixth grade. And school at that time was not compulsory, meaning you didn't have to go if you didn't want to, or if your dad was undermanned at the farm or what have you, uh, you didn't have to go to school. So that was up until about sixth grade. Now, uh, things sort of progressed uh, in that way until about the turn of the century. So about 1900, 1910 in there. And what happened was the length of time that children went to school was slowly extended up until uh, what we have now, the, the 12th grade. Now, why is that important or why is that relevant? Because uh, I don't have any kids. Uh, we, we don't have kids. We've never had kids. And yet, I've been a taxpayer now for about the last 35 years, 36 years actually. Uh, and part of my taxes, regardless of where I live in the country or where I move to, part of my taxes go to paying for the local school system, right? Somebody before me paid for me to go to school. And so in my last 36 years, we've been paying for other people to go to school. Fair enough. That's part of being part of society. Although, you people who are staunchly uh, 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 cemented in the idea of being anti-socialist, uh, I'll tell you, my paying for somebody else's kids to go to school, that's sort of a socialist idea, along with the post office and uh, the railroads and stuff like that. Anything, basically, that the government is uh, supporting for everybody is essentially a socialist idea. But I digress. Anyway, so let's get back on subject. Uh, education and why it should be free. So why is it free up until 12th grade? And then you sort of get booted out and have to become an adult. Well, the unfortunate thing is that maybe we as a society are at the point where that 12th grade mark is antiquated, much like sixth grade in the 1850s being the uh, end point of your public education. 12th grade now, I propose to you, is antiquated and uh, maybe should be extended. Maybe there should be two years of college free uh, or four years of college free. And what I mean by that is if maybe college uh, is something that you still need to apply to and still need to want to go to, but don't necessarily uh, have to pay for if you can't. Uh, you know, meaning that when you take the uh, your, your tests in junior and senior year of high school, maybe that will determine whether or not you're able to go on to college. So that those who want to go to college have an opportunity to go to college, regardless of the cost. Now let's talk for a minute about the cost. Okay, so up there in that house, we had a real uh, scumbag who lived there, and he did not go to college, and I don't think he finished high school. And uh, he lived up there peddling his drugs and having his buddies come over and they would smoke meth and stay up for days on end. And it was sort of a bad deal because, again, they're up there with nothing to do but drugs. Excuse me. Now, he's not there anymore. Where he is, he's in prison at the moment. So what does that cost? Well, in the state of New Mexico where we live, apparently it, the average cost for somebody to be in prison here is, what was the number? It's about 35,000 bucks. 
okay, for that jerk up there to be sitting in uh, Santa Fe in the lockup right now is costing 35000 bucks, of which we are all paying. Okay, so much like we pay our tax dollars to go to school, part of my tax dollars are going for that scumbag to sit in prison right now for $35,000. Okay, so there's that. Now, I can tell you because I looked before I got on the, uh, uh, the camera here that the cost of an in-state tuition education at the University of New Mexico up in Albuquerque, and the UNM is a pretty good school. It's where I go when I have a medical issue. I go to the UNM hospital because that's a pretty good school for the area. Anyway, in-state tuition for UNM is seven thousand bucks a year. Okay, so let's look at that. Seven thousand bucks for an individual to go to school, or thirty-five thousand bucks for a douchebag up the uh, hill there to go to prison. Well, I can tell you quite honestly, I would rather have my tax dollars spent sending those who want to go to pr or go to school to go to school than to have them warehoused in a prison. So there's that. Now the other thing is, uh, let me tell you this. I again Googled this because I thought the, uh, the number was out of control. But Rick Santorum, when he was running in the last election, threw this statistic out there and a lot of people were like, oh my God, that is so off. you got to be making it up. But no. If you actually go to the U.S. Census webpage and look, you will see how many people have college degrees in the United States. How many people? Take a guess. Come on. Guess, 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 guess. Okay. Of the 10% that are out there, or the, the 10 that are out there, right? Whether that's 100 or 100,000 or whatever. Of 10 that are out there, 70% do not have college degrees. Only 30% do. Look it up. So what that means is tomorrow when you're at the store or you're at your kid's baseball game or what have you, look around and count 10 and then subtract 7. And the lucky three that are remaining are, statistically speaking, those who have a college degree. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that as we move to an economy that is less labor-oriented, meaning uh, you know, things are being replaced by robotics and the factories and uh, automation is cutting down on the number of hands uh, and backs necessary to do a job. People are going to be required to use their brains to imp uh, improvise, or improvise and implement new, uh, new things. Meaning that, uh, you know, the STEM program, science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, is sort of underman undermanned. We need uh, that continuation at the college level. Uh, and you aren't going to have that if people who want to go to college can't afford it. So again, if there is some student somewhere who is getting good grades but can't afford the cost of tuition because, you know, I mean, where I went to college is, uh, shit, I think it said $36,000 this year. It wasn't that when I went, but it is now. Uh, and I probably couldn't afford to go there, actually. So we need to get the students educated. So what I'm saying is, yeah, we have a doctor shortage now. And we have a nurse shortage now. And we have a truck driver shortage now. But I don't know you necessarily need a college degree to, uh, to be a truck driver. But if we have more of our students going to college and part of our tax dollars are paying for that, then everybody benefits. Let me say that. Everybody benefits the more our population is educated, all right? The more our population is educated, the less we have to worry about douchebag up the hill there uh, coming down and stealing our stuff to, uh, to sell, to buy his uh, bags of whatever he's uh, injecting today. So, let me think. I had one other thought. Uh, the other thought is, okay, again, douchebag up the hill there. Not only is he a drain on society because he's costing me 35000 bucks to warehouse per year up there in the, uh, the state clink, but then there's all the other programs. There's the uh, EBT, and there's the housing subsidy, and there's the, uh, you know, the uh, Medicare, and all that kind of crap that essentially we are paying for as a society because he didn't get in school or he doesn't want to go to school and so he doesn't want to work, and so there you have it, okay? So that's the end of one side of the spectrum. Now, 
let's back up for a minute. Let's say for a sake of argument that he actually went to college, okay? If he went out to college, and let's say then he came out with a degree, and then let's say he, uh, I don't know, became the manager of something, or he decided he wanted to do a startup, or he uh, invented something, or whatever it is that he did that was miraculous, he would be paying a lot more in taxes and contributing a lot more to society than he is now, okay? Up there, he's a drain on society. But if we put the investment out there to get our kids educated, then potentially they are a benefit to society. If we had 70% of the population educated instead of uh, 30, then we'd be a hell of a lot better off. We'd have a lot more people contributing uh, to the tax base, and we'd have a lot more innovation going on here. Uh, now, why is this a problem? It's a problem because short-minded people uh, say that free college is a socialist idea, and they get locked up on that S word, and I don't care what you call it. Or you get people like, uh, well, people that I'm related to who are like, well, I'm not paying for that. I'm not paying for some kid to go to school that I don't even know, this kind of crap. Well, the fact of the matter is, as I said, you're paying for some kid to go to prison. And so there's your option. Anyway, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And uh, do me a favor, subscribe. Talk to you later. Shellco for it. Thanks, bye.